Hey guys, today we're going to do some 3D modeling and make a cam. Now in class we're talking about cams, but just as a reminder that a cam is an object that allows for a variety of styles of motion based on the rotation of the cam. The cam is usually attached to some sort of a drive shaft or an axle, and when the cam spins on the drive shaft it allows the object that's sitting on top of it to perform the motion based on that shape. So let's make a pair cam. Alright, so uh, I'm in on shape here and I'm going to be using the dimensions from the PLTW curriculum. So we have uh, kind of two circles put together here, um, and overall this object is going to be a quarter inch thick. So the ones that we're going to pay attention to first, in the middle we've got this quarter inch diameter. That's where our axle will go. Uh, and we've got a big circle down here. The big thing to pay attention to here is that this is a one and one fourth inch radius circle. Then we have a one quarter inch radius circle up top. And you might be thinking, well, that doesn't really look like a circle, but uh, we're going to use it to uh, to make our shape. Okay, so first let's let's open a part studio and drop in this middle circle for our drive shaft. All right, so I'm going to click on the plus sign down in the bottom, and I'm going to create a new part studio. All right, so I'm going to create a new sketch. We're going to put it on the front view, and I'll use my view cube to flip around to the front here. And I'm just going to use the center point circle tool to make that drive shaft hole. And according to the dimensions on the sheet, it needs to have a 1 quarter inch diameter. So I'm just going to type in 0.25. Now notice that this has the notation with the zero with the circle with the line through it. Uh, that's the diameter symbol. So we're okay so far. Okay, so next I'm going to make this outer circle, and since this says 1 and 1 fourth inches radius, that means that the diameter of that circle is double that, so that's 2 and a half inches. So I'm going to use the circle tool again, make sure that I put it so that it's centered on the origin, and I'm going to make that 2.5 inches. Alright, so I have two circles, and now I'm going to add some construction lines. You can see they've got this horizontal, uh, vertical construction line straight down the middle. That isn't super important. I'm actually going to leave that off. But we've got this horizontal construction line through the origin, and we've got this other one that's one and one quarter inch above that. So I'm going to switch over to the line tool and make that a construction line. And I'm going to drop a construction line straight down the middle of this circle. Doesn't matter how long it is, as long as it goes all the way through. Then I'm going to press escape to get out of that. And then I'm going to make another one, same way, line, construction. And I'm just going to drop it up here. The only thing is that we want to make sure that it's got that horizontal constraint connected to it so that it's flat. Now I'm going to use the dimension tool to make the distance between these two lines one and a quarter. So that's 1.25 inches. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to make that circle up here that has that one quarter inch radius. And I'm going to place that above this circle, just up here. And it's got a quarter inch radius, which means that it needs to have a half inch diameter. Okay. So you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, well, this is, this is not a pair. It doesn't look anything like this. Well, we need to add a couple of tangent lines to these shapes. Um, we're actually going to be editing this down and just using parts of these circles. So I'm going to use the line tool and drop a line over here. I'm not going to dimension it or anything. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Oop. Let's try that again. We'll drop one right over here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to use the tangent tool and make it so that this line is tangent to both circles. So I'm going to click the line and the top circle. And then I'm going to click the line again and the bottom circle. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to make it so that these lines are coincident to the ends of the circle. So I want this to be touching the circle here. I want to make the point coincident. Sorry, make sure you click the point and then the circle. 
same thing here. Point, circle, point, circle, point, circle. Okay, we are almost done. However, there's one thing that's missing. This circle up here is too tall. So this is where we come in and we take a look at that construction line. We can see that this line comes through right here. So we want to make it so that this circle sits on that construction line. So this should be coincident. Oops. Let's try making it so that it's tangent with that line. There we go. And then we can finish that sketch. It doesn't look like much right now, but once we extrude it, we should get our shape. So I'm going to extrude everything on this except for the inside cutout. And the depth we're going to set to 0 0.25. And that is our pair cam. should be just like the one that I made here. The only difference is um, I added a fillet on this one because I went ahead and 3D printed this. So we can actually see it in person uh, after you guys finish making your own. So with that said, go ahead and work on your pair cam. And when you finish with that, um, we're also going to do a couple of the other cams that are in today's task. So make sure you take a look at those and follow the instructions. If you have any questions, let me know. See you guys next time.